you again? Talk me through the idea of uh, giving it a bit more power at the end of the squeeze. It's, it's all about really making sure that the extra grip is provided as required by the user. As I say, if you're looking at practicalities of doing up your trousers or doing up shoelaces or working in the kitchen, the grip force is quite an important part of that, uh, helping the patient achieve the level of functionality that they want. The key thing with the, with the pulsing is the control strategy that is applied through the actual grip of the hand. So if I keep that signal on, you can see that what's happening is the, the increased signal is providing a stronger grip so that those fingers are closing down with ever increasing strength onto that particular object. Now that's a, that's a very easy demonstration with a soft ball, but if you think about trying to tie shoelaces or a belt, that's a very important aspect of where this grip strength provides the level of function that users want. And, and, and let's, let's face it, there is, there's a long way to go. The science fiction elements of having neurally integrated uh, patients is becoming science fact, but it's a long way off for, for the average amputee. Will you be able to play Beethoven? I think that's going to be quite a challenge and I think that that will happen one day but in terms of where we are with bionics, uh, if you look at the whole realm of bionics, it's an emerging field, it's a very exciting field. It is interacting the latest technology, battery technology, software technology with human beings but effectively you're, you're looking at two completely differing systems trying to work with each other so there's, there's still a long way to go. Three-jawed shark, hold open, save changes, yes.